All right, YouTube. Now we're going to talk about how to pick your character. What do they do? I'm here to explain that to you. I hope my explanations of the current characters will help you on your decision of who to pick. I'll be giving you the rundown of how they're generally played. Some people pick a character based on if they're cool. Visually, others will pick a character based on their vibes. Right? You, you, whatever it is, whatever attracts you to a character, just pick them and see where it goes. As always, I have to mention, I'm going to be streaming the Alpha Lab every day on twitch.tv forward slash cloud805. So if you're confused or you have some questions, you know where to go. Pull up to the stream. Don't forget to like, sub, and comment. I appreciate y'all watching. Okay, back to the video. So don't worry. I'll give you a general brief explanation on what they do. Let's get into it. So I want to talk about archetypes. Okay, there's a couple archetypes to go through and let me just highlight some of the characters here, right? Echo is a mix up rush down type character with his toolkit, with his rewind, with his time winder. Braum is a support type character. His shield giving you armor as an assist, two points of armor with unbreakable. Elawi is a setup character with all her tentacles. Darius is another armored bruiser type character. You get the point, right? There's archetypes that each character can fit into but that archetype does not mean that's the only way to play them it's just generally how to approach them i want to just say these aren't guides to play a character but giving you a brief explanation to what they do and their strengths i can't stress that enough guides will come later don't worry they are coming ari is definitely the movement type character in this game she has an air dash that goes back and forward she has these rekkas that you can cancel into s1 note that if they are blocked you are very unsafe so if you're gonna play ari and you're gonna use this uh just keep that in mind use this more so as like a baiting tool or just kind of just moving around you know you can do two i don't think she could do more than two yeah just two two can she do a rekka and into her S1 Sire from the Rekka. Ari's more so for the people that like the freedom of movement while also providing decent support for their point character as her back assist is a long range projectile. Amazing to have, no matter what game you play, you can have her hit at a distance while staying safe. Ari is pretty good at also controlling space on the screen. With down S1, she likes to throw out, or what I like to call, bubble buddy. It is a tracking projectile. It's not fully homing, so if they were to jump during it, like so. It just locks onto their fixed location as soon as it throws itself out, as you can see. And just the last thing I want to talk over or about in terms of support is her down down held S1 super. You can throw it out and then tag as a way to steal back the neutral or to force your opponent into a difficult situation so pretty good well-rounded character all in all if you want to play a character that's difficult to catch and just constantly moving around the screen pick ari she has a bunch of tools to use she's pretty versatile very annoying to deal with especially once you master her and her rekkas and her movement on the opposite end of ari we have braum in terms of movement braum's pretty slow but don't let that discourage you, okay? What he lacks in movement, he makes up with his moveset, and I'll show you why. Thanks to Braum's shield being back S2, you have infinite armor against physical attacks. Now, one of the things this loses to is charge heavies. The other option that this loses to... Oh, get in there. There we go. Is a grab. And the last thing that can beat Braum's shield is level 2. Oh, I got it out of time. Yeah, level 2's break the armor or beat it outright. To further talk about Braum's armor, he does have armor as an assist, but it's only one point of armor. You can make that two points of armor with his unbreakable buff. Just a quick example to show you. You can see how that can be very cheap very good to abuse. Braum takes being a support character to the next level. He stops players from being way too aggressive because he slows down the pace of the match with his armor. And on top of that, he can also eat projectiles with some of his specials. S2, for example, will eat projectiles. Here's Timewinder. Now it's gone. Just to kind of go over Braum's other assists very quickly. 
forward s or sorry forward tag without unbreakable not too strong right you know it's cool hit some they have to block you're pretty plus even on hit you don't get too much of a conversion let me show you what that looks like when you have unbreakable the game changes when you have unbreakable you get a wall bounce the last thing i want to mention about Braum is yes he may be slow you may not have any great air movement right you're probably thinking how do i catch people that run from me well luckily uh, Braum's portals back him up if somebody's on the other side of the screen you can throw the poro and kind of run behind it it's not the best option but you can do something with it granted you can only have one portal on the screen at a time i'm trying to get another one out the game does not permit you so hold down forward S1 to get the long range portal or just tap it to get the short range one. So remember, if you want to slow down the pace of a match, make your opponent respect you, pick Braum. Great support character. And he's got portals that dap you up. My man Darius, the big body bruisers for people that want to hit hard and feel good while hitting hard. Just, I mean, look at this. Ugh. Okay. He may not have as much armor as Braum, on his moves and negate options as Braum, but what he does have is big buttons that hit hard and far that just feel so satisfying to land. As well as applying a debuff called bleed to the opponent. As you can see, Ari right below her health bar and the burst bar, kind of like where I'm jumping through. Yeah, that little blood drop right there is the bleed debuff. What does it do? It makes you do more damage when your opponent blocks. Darius is basically the bully character pick. You can steal back his turn with his reversal, which is down S2. As you can see, you know, that big diamond that pops up is the armor activated. Okay, I must rectify this statement. If I said Braum has armor earlier on his assist, I, I, I lied, I lied, I lied. All right, let me, let me land this. You can trade. But there's there's no point of armor. So Darius players have gaslit us into thinking that assist had armor. That is crazy. Okay. Moving on from our realization, yeah, Dari Darius is bullies the opponent, alright? With his armored move on point, big buttons, right? With the you could pull them in, and then you have multiple options off of this. Great character. Probably the easiest character to learn, honestly. Puts his opponent in so many uncomfortable decisions because of bleed. So all of these moves don't normally chip without bleed. So this is just bonus damage. Like, like look it. No chip damage done. So you can force your opponent in so many uncomfortable situations with this little debuff. Moving on to Echo. Echo's specialty is rushing down and mixing up. And he's also a very fast character. One of the faster characters of the game. Echo reminds me a bit of Zero. So those of you that understand know that means this character is going to be a problem. And I'll explain why. Echo is a mix-up machine. He has a lot of options such as hold down, roll, fake the overhead, right? They can go for a throw. You can bait the throw or you can roll. Excuse me. You can roll, overhead, just kidding, go low. So they're like, oh, I have to block high. All of a sudden, you have to block low. So if you like stunning on your opponent, right? Mixing them up so hard, you take the socks and leave the shoes on. Play Echo. He's great for that. And again, some of the better movement. He has a little short hop in the air. It only goes forward, though. So be very careful of how you use this. But it's not a bad option. You know, most characters in this game don't really have good air movement. But Echo has an option, which is always a plus. Another thing to add is when it comes to Echo's clones, he will always go back to the clone. There are two versions of his clone. There is the non-held version, which he must do the move. He cannot cancel it. So if you do S2 into S2, he does replay into a slash. If you do down in S2, he does an upward kick. But if you charge it and hold it down, you can get break which is a strong wall bounce move or if you just tap s2 with the charge you don't do anything so you can see how echo can be very tricky very difficult to catch like you're up here and then you just go back to your clone and you make your opponent with something you know dash in they do a heavy you're like oh just kidding ah now you're gonna get punished character is he's funny he's cool so in short echo is a fast mobile character 
It's difficult to lock down. That excels at forcing you to guess once he gets his hands on you. Uh, he has pretty solo comeback capability due to his solo mix-ups, you know. You get the hit, you throw a time winder, right? You do a mini time winder on their wake up, you roll past them. So, you know, it could look something like this, right? Can I do this? Yeah, buddy. You just roll past them, get a mix up. Easy to do. Moving on to Alawi, the setup character. She's a character that set up traps for your opponent to fall into. What do I mean by that? With her tentacles, she can cover the screen with pure offense and terror. Her one issue is that it can be difficult to get started as she has to reach the conditions to get the tentacles out, which are bound to her S moves. Once you do have your tentacles out on the field, it makes it very difficult for your opponent to do anything. And another thing I want to add is, see that big green radius circle where the tentacle is? That is how far the tentacle will hit. So if you do something like this, it's not going to hit because it's too far. You bring them in a little bit and then the tentacle will proc. So that, that's your radius of how far the tentacle will hit. Now, what's really cool and unique about Elawi's tentacles is that they stay out even if she's not on the screen. So if you swap to another character, you can still use them for things like, say, a grab. The, you can now get a combo off of a grab thanks to Alawi's tentacle. Usually Yasuo cannot get anything here. It's just way too far to do anything. The best way to describe it is the tentacles are an extension of Alawi without having to go in and do anything herself. A safe way to play, essentially. She'd be a monster in this game once she gets started. That's the hardest part, is getting started. But once you get started and you set up Hell's Paradise, you're going to have a great time. All right, and for the record, how many tentacles can she get out? I'm glad you asked. She can have two tentacles out. So there's one, there's two. Now she can have four tentacles on the field if you do her down, down S2 super. And they act independently. She does not do anything to proc them once you do the super. In conclusion, Eli puts you into mental stack overload. There's so many things that you have to worry about. You know, you can get grabbed. The tentacle could just be lingering there. She could, you know, down, down S2 and all four tentacles now act independently. You see where I'm going with this. If your kink is forcing your opponent to always be stressing, go for a Lowy. Finally, we have Yasuo, who I think is the most versatile character. He's agile, just like Ari and Echo. You've probably noticed a trend that these smaller characters are more agile and just have better movement. Makes sense. They're smaller characters as opposed to the big body characters. Yasuo specializes in being a stance character. What's a stance character? I'm glad you asked. When you input S1, he goes into stance, also known as calm. This stance gives you different options depending on what button you hit. So this is stance into light, stance medium, stance heavy, stance down heavy, stance S2, stance S1. I like to think of Yasuo as the execution character in this game. He's technical, he's saucy. So if you were looking for the execution character, the skill check, uh, try picking up Yasuo. He's not too hard, but he's very fun. Now, of course, I, again, these aren't guides, but there are key features that I want to point out on these characters. Yasuo's wind wall, as in the game, it stops projectiles, right? And buffs your normals. This is great to have. In the end, Yasuo is for those that prefer technical characters that at the surface level, you know, you can do a simple combo, right? This is not that hard. Very simple. Okay, damage. I like to say he's, he's a canvas, simply due to the sheer amount of options he has. Yeah, I believe he has double the moves some of the characters have due to this, oh, whoops, due to this stance right here. So if you love hitting buttons and looking cool while doing it, Yasuo is definitely the character for you. If you've yet to really feel like a character will mesh with you, even after watching the video, I still implore you to go in and try all the characters. And if nothing still clicks, I highly advise you to still get a grasp on the game. Eventually there'll be a character that you'll like and you'll have fun playing. It's just a matter of time until we have, what, 50, 100 characters in this game? How many characters does League have? Like 150? I don't know. Your character will come. So, I hope I was able to help y'all figure out which characters to pick. Or if you're doing with somebody, what character you should pick. Go out there, take them to the lab, or 
in a match, whatever you want to do, and have some fun with it. And please remember, like, sub, and comment. I'm going to make a lot more of these. Okay, bye!